Okay, well, it is dispatch day in the chicken coop, unfortunately, but also fortunately because we will get some lovely chicken stock out of this event. So Eric and I are going through, we're collecting the roosters that we don't need. We have way too many in here. We have, I think we have like 12 roosters, which is just too many roosters. And we're also gonna be taking down a few older hens or just a few hens in general. Right now we have a lot of birds, it's getting a wee bit expensive to keep feeding them all. Although it's a sad day, this is what we raise the chickens for, eggs and for food, and we are going to make just awesome food, awesome chicken stock out of this. So there is a huge storm blowing into Alaska right now, so we have these extremely high winds, but we're gonna try to get some chicken broth made today. And this is one of our little roosters. He's extremely terrified right now. These guys were hatched out in the spring by the mother hens. They don't have a lot of like human interaction with us. So they're extremely afraid of us. We have to use the net to catch them. And these little buggers are fast. So we've got three of them caught in the cage. That way when we're ready to dispatch them, we can just come grab one from the cage and bring it over to where our kill cone is gonna be. And I'm gonna go build a kill cone real quick for these guys. This is our little homemade killing cone I just put together. Usually if we're just doing a couple chickens, We'll take a block of wood and an axe. We'll cut the chicken's head off. That's that. When you're doing a lot of birds, it's a lot easier to use a kill cone. And I feel like it's a little easier on the bird too. So basically you put them in here upside down. The head comes out, you grab the head, you cut the arteries on both sides. They bleed out. It's a real quick process. We got about 10 to 15 birds to do. We'll catch up with you guys when we're done. Okay, so we are making the decision to scald our birds today. That's where you heat up water very hot and dip the chicken in it for probably like close to 30 seconds. The Icelandics have a lot of feathers. It takes a long time to get them off. It is so much easier to skin the birds, but we're making this decision because we took a few hens, we dispatched a few hens and they have a lot of fat on them. They're older, they've got a lot of fat in their skin. So we want that flavor in the chicken stock. And that's why we're going through this extra extra step. I think our water's at 170. Yeah, that's pretty good. There you go, they do not dress out that big. These are these are actually bigger than in the past because we usually have to dispatch them a little bit sooner. So this is actually a, a bigger a bigger rooster. This is a hen and that's a few year old, so she, few years old, so she is not she's definitely not what you're used to if you're buying chicken in the grocery store. <laughs> We're taking heads off and feet off. That's all gonna be for the dogs. Trying to keep all the feathers together, that's gonna go into our compost and we're just putting them aside until we're ready to make our stock. This is the last little rooster we got to do. Man, it takes a while to pluck chickens. I'm telling you, we're gonna take all these feathers. And since we're getting like these huge gusts of wind, I'm gonna bury these in the compost so they don't go flying everywhere. Next step, Errol's gonna be taking the innards out of all these chickens.
Well, someone had a mighty large breakfast. We made sure to feed everyone really special treats yesterday. And of course they had breakfast today. So that's the chicken's crock. It's a little odd for me because usually I just skin them, but we got that out. There's some lymph nodes that I'm gonna take out around the neck. And this is why you wanna keep the skin on these hens because they have like so much delicious fat. This is a, probably a three and a half year old hen here. Okay, that's gonna do it for today. We got a nice ice chest full of chicken. We're gonna wait out this storm because it is picking up. It's getting extremely windy. And we're gonna start back up tomorrow. We're gonna be making our chicken broth. We're getting started on our chicken broth. And I think each of these pressure cans is gonna hold five chickens, which is perfect. We have 16 to do. I have another pot over here on our other stove that we're also going to be cooking down. We have some frozen veggies in there from last year. And I figured that this would be the perfect time to use those. We also have some carrots and parsnips and some tomatoes going in too. Looks good to me. We're gonna add a whole bunch of herbs. Those are gonna break down and I've got some fennel we're adding too. And then we are going to add some dried mushrooms that we have. These are bolites and it turns out that we don't actually like these all that much. So I figured this would be, again, the perfect application for these. Add lots of flavor. This is really the time you wanna add the flavor because this is going to be what makes the end product so flavorful along with the fat from the birds. We're gonna finish it off with a big spoonful of garlic and of course a whole bunch of spices and then we have to get our other pots filled up too. This looks amazing. Eric and I have made chicken broth with just chickens. And although it turns out awesome, when you add all this stuff, it just totally takes it to another level. It's very complex. I can't wait to try it. Eric's gonna get these all topped off with water and then we're gonna get them heating up. Today we're gonna to be using our pressure canners as pressure cookers and we're gonna be cooking down the stock in these. It's very simple to do. You can fill ours two thirds of the way full. We're gonna put our lid on. We're gonna bring it up to 15 pounds of pressure and we're gonna let this batch go for 60 minutes. The pot behind me, that's just a regular pot. That one's gonna to have to go a lot longer.
Okay, we are multitasking while our chicken broth is going. We're getting our garlic prepared for storage. It has been curing for about two weeks outside now. And of course we have had rain, but we have it out of the rain. We have it in this little lean-to. So now it's coming inside with us and it's really simple to prepare it. You just cut off the top. I usually leave about an inch or an inch and a half. And then you can just brush the roots if they're dry enough, these ones are, or you can clip them like that. And at this point, you just rub your fingers along them. And what you're doing is getting like an outer layer of the garlic, kind of taking it off like that. And then there you go. That one is beautiful and ready for storage. Not all of them look this good because they have a lot of dirt on them from when we harvested since it was so wet. And when you go to remove them, if you're starting to take a lot of the layers off, you just want to stop. So you don't want to keep going because then eventually you'll start to see the clothes. So I have to make sure that I don't do that. This is kind of a good example because I can tell there's only like one more paper layer before I get to the clothes. So I'm just going to stop there. I almost have a full milk crate, which is awesome. And then we've got another one that's like our overripe bulbs or anything that got damaged when we were harvesting. And I think our chicken broth is almost done. So we're going to get some quartz ready. Good. So much flavor. Okay, I think we're about there. I wish I could describe the smell of this. I, I don't even know what to call it. It is amazing. It's like roasted almost. I don't know, buttery? <laughs> it smells amazing. We're gonna have a lot. We're gonna at least have five gallons from these two pots. You're gonna need some more jars. With all the stuff that we're pulling out, Eric and I like to pull some of the big chunks of meat out and we'll usually cook that up for us. If it has cooked long enough and the bones are like just so super soft and dissolve pretty much disintegrate, we can give it to the dogs. These ones aren't quite there. I think we just didn't cook it as long as we have in the past. So it's actually gonna go back to the chickens and that's good because they're molting so they could use the extra protein. Look at that. That is flavor, right? Let's just fill up eight. Does that sound good? Yeah. It smells so good. I, the amount of fat on it is amazing. Mm. Let's see if they're hot enough. Awesome, we're canning. These are pretty easy to do. Chicken broth only has to go for 25 minutes in quartz, so it shouldn't take us too long. I think we're gonna do quite a few batches here. This is gonna be awesome. Our first batch of chicken stock is almost done, and this third pot we had going is almost done as well. This is the chicken stock that's cooking down. 
And it takes a lot longer when you do it this way, but low and slow really is the name of the game. That's kind of the expedited quick version. The longer you let it cook down and let all that stuff break down, you're really gonna get more flavor from it. This doesn't have to go much longer, but we've done some math and I think it's gonna be a lot of chicken stock. Spatula. Look at the color difference. Just from cooking it in the pressure canner, the other one. This is our best chicken broth to date. It is glistening in all of its glory. We ended up with 35 of these total, which is absolutely amazing. There's so much flavor in here from all the ingredients we added. We had onions, kale, celery, Brussels sprouts, and a whole bunch more. So as soon as that last batch finishes, we are headed in for the night. Eric made us some delicious enchiladas with the chicken.